Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. All right, everybody, welcome again to Bear Bets, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code BEARBETS. That's BEARBETS for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets. I am Chris Felica, your host. My co-host is to my left, Jeff Schwartz. Our friends in the gambling group chat, Will Hill and John Murray, will join us shortly. Really good slate of games. I, I can't say last week's slate of games was very good, but the the underdogs did finally yeah. uh, come through. It was a good day for for dog betters. Um, this this week, however, we got we got some pretty um, marquee games, and obviously the big one between the the two players currently favored. Well, I shouldn't say two of the three players amongst the uh, uh, the MVP race: Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Bills, and Chiefs, and then. You've got Lamar Jackson, who is the slight favorite, uh, another big game against the Steelers. So, How much of, I mean, I guess the thing I'm struggling with, with, with MVP, and I know, I know Lamar has been great. I just wonder in the back of voters' minds, if they're going to vote for him again to win consecutive MVPs and a third MVP, it is as if there's a little part amongst their mentality and their thought process of, yeah, but is he going to let us down again in the postseason? And you got another unbelievable candidate in Josh Allen, and then you've got Patrick Mahomes on the Chiefs who hasn't lost a game yet. So I certainly wouldn't want to be betting out uh, betting uh, Lamar here at one, minus one ten. No, um, you know the. Again, the, the the hardest part about this award is it most often goes to the quarterback of the one seed, right? right. Um, I can't even. When's the last time it hasn't? I mean, it was Rogers two years. He was the one seed right in Green Bay for a while. Then it was Lamar. It's been Mahomes. Maybe Mahomes was a two seed one of those years, and Brady was the one seed. Um, I don't think that was the case in 2018. Like I, I just so if if Allen has to win this weekend, essentially, I think to to be the probably, favor of the award, probably. And unfortunately for Lamar, I do think the lack of posting success hurts him in the eyes of the voters, even though that should not matter, right? Right, correct. It should not matter at all because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's just human it's a nature. season award. But a three-time MVP who hasn't even been to AFC, AFC Championship, yeah. AFC Championship yeah. was last year, yeah. right? It was yeah. last year, yeah. One AFC Championship game, uh, I think is, a, is, a, is going to be a tough sell for the voters, even though I disagree with that at all. Like, if you're the MVP for the season, you should be the MVP. Um but if they're if they're three games behind in Kansas City, how does Mahomes? He's not his best season. I just I think they're gonna default to Mahomes. Like like, like that's the thing, and I, and I agree with you on Josh Allen. In full disclosure, I got a Josh Allen ticket before the year at like plus eight hundred. They're both playing better than Mahomes. Correct. <laughs> but if you are Josh Allen and you lose to Baltimore and you lose to Kansas City, it's gonna be kind of hard, I think, for voters to overlook that. Yeah. But uh, can Mahomes numbers are so pedestrian. That's the thing. Like, can you you're basically that that, that's like the worst possible default you can make. I know. It's like it's like the old uh, it's it's like like, I'm looking right now. It's like in the Heisman, like, oh we're just gonna give it to the quarterback on the number one team. And so Dylan Gabriel is gonna win is what I hear. Um I hope not. So Baltimore, I have a thirty five hundred dollar, a thirty five hundred ticket on Travis Hunter too. We we both have the same ticket. It'd be incredible to win that. Um, I mean, look, Lamar last year threw for thirty seven hundred yards ish, twenty four touchdowns, seven receptions. Mahomes is not even really on pace to to get there. No, and plus Lamar adds the you know the eight hundred yards rushing, whatever he had last season. So, um, 
Mahomes doesn't, doesn't have that. It's a tough market this year. I go back to Jared Goff still. Like, if he's not winning, you don't think so? No. If the Lions go fourteen and three and win the NFC, those tickets went bye bye loud with with the five interception. But game two of those weren't his fault. Though. They, you think you think the voters are going to go back through the game film? Yeah. Oh, he threw foul, but th- this one wasn't his fault. It, well, no. A lot of film watchers Stop. are gatekeeping on social media about this, though. So I don't know. They're 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 the ultimate golf, golf say, tickets are dead. Ultimate say this. Um, I hate to be bumbling about this subject, but. I just think Your it's going to default. You can bubble. You can bubble about whatever you want. Bubble. I think. I think it's going to default to Mahomes if they go fifteen and two. So you would not bet Patrick Mahomes right now at fifty plus seven fifty. If he beats Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson, they're going to give it to the guys who he lost to as a one seed by multiple games. I've you. You know these voters. I know Correct. some of the voters. There's fifty of them, right? It's yes, fifty voters. Um, now they now the difference though that they too is they do tier it now where yeah, you should they, just be you, you, you vote you, you, for you one guy. Now it's one, two, three. So maybe the tier system gets but, Josh Allen or Lamar home because there's enough votes. I, I, I what I'm what I'm hearing is you should bet Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. If you think they're gonna if you think they're gonna win this game this weekend, and they're a two point dog, right? And I don't think Mahomes is the best quarterback this season. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I am gonna make this bet because of you. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I, Am I wrong? No, I, I, yeah. I, I can't. I can't bet it right now because in New York, where we're recording our podcast, you can't bet awards. You can't even no. though it's on, even though it shows. Oh, I don't know. No, it's, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm uh, no. I try to make as few edges as possible when I'm in the city, and then I go home and make all of them tonight when I land. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a bunch in Colorado. So, I'll, make, I'll make a bunch in Colorado later tonight because the lines don't really move very much between Wednesdays and Thursdays during the week. Um, so that's why I look at the MVP market. I, I, I hate to just say because I think again. I, I said this for a while now. I think it's so true. If there was no Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen would be Patrick Mahomes. And he he just unfortunately has to play Patrick Mahomes all the time. Correct. <laughs> and, and and I think we're gonna see the best from the Chiefs again this weekend. Um and they're gonna lose the Panthers. So and I'll be at that game, by the way. I'll be in I'll be in Charlotte. It's in Charlotte. I'm taking Could my you son. you imagine? Taking my son to his first. Hey, well, I lost to the Raiders last year. I mean taking my son to his first Chiefs game next very weekend. Good. It'll be a lot of fun. And they're probably gonna lose the Panthers. Yeah. Coach of the year, Bear. Uh, Who's the coach of the year? I, I mean, you can make a great case for a bunch of guys. I mean, I got I got some Kevin O'Connell from before the okay. year. Really, I got some Jonathan Gannon from a few weeks ago, like we talked about. So, I mean, the, those are the, the tickets I'm holding. But you you you, you could say Mike Tomlin, Andy Reid, Dan Campbell, Jonathan Gannon, Kevin O'Connell, Jim Harbaugh, or maybe even Dan Quinn. You could say any one of those guys, and you'd have a legitimate – I, I think case and a legitimate argument as to why one of those guys should win. Uh, typically, th- this doesn't really go to an Andy Reid for going fifteen and two, or a, a, a Dan Campbell for going fifteen and two or fourteen. Typically, it goes to a team that kind of struggled the year before and they had a bit a bit of a turnaround. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Mike Tomlin didn't have a bit of a turnaround, but he's never won the award. Uh, they, they were supposed to be bad this year. They're coming up on the most difficult part of their schedule, so I don't know if I would want to bet Tomlin now at four to one. I don't think that's a good bet because I, I think the Steelers may have some losses coming up on their schedule. I know you disagree with me because you think the Steelers are well, we probably going to probably going to win that division. We, so. we keep thinking that, and they keep and they keep winning. So I don't know what I don't know what to tell you. Your wife, by the way, trolled me on Instagram. I know she, she said, did. She told me about she sent it. me a DM saying saying like, "How about those Steelers?" She, and, 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 and the funny part about that was she said literally the day before. I'm, we were sitting, and she's like, "I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm not because we're watching Monday night yeah. uh, pre pregame show." She's like, "I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. The Steelers are doing well. I'm not going to, not going to say anything." And then literally the next day, did. oh, I had, I had to say something to Jeff. Just straight. I love, I love it. Good. It's just, hey, man, fandom. She's a fan. I oh, love she it. Is. Um, no, I, 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 uh, I would give it to Tomlin. I mean, maybe Russell Wilson can throw it to him via, via, <laughs> the lob, deep, via, via deep, the high bomb pass that he has. That's fantastic. Um, Man, the Steelers are playing well. I don't know. I mean, they, they just are. Um, you know, you a black and blue division game this weekend. We'll find one other market bear that I'm kind of I'm kind of curious about as looking through these markets. Comeback player of the year. Cousins is a slight favorite. Minus yeah, 120. This is a crazy one. Joe Burrow is plus 250. Yep. Kyler. Kyler Murray. That's the one I'm looking at right now. I bet Kyler before the early, if like after 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 the 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 Bills game week one I bet him was like twenty to one or something. So for those who who maybe have missed the new way this is going to be basically judged, is it's no longer 
Guy sucked, wasn't playing. Now he right. plays. Now he's no longer it's no longer Geno Smith or right. Pat, Joe Flacco on the it's on your couch. Injure, off injury, and all these players are off injury. Tyler Murray, if they win the NFC West, he's winning this award. I think so. Yeah, I I'm think a, so I'm as well. Getting, I mean, I'm I'm getting getting you, right you know, you know, Kirk. I don't think can you bet. I thought I didn't think you could bet awards here. Oh, you can't. I'm just. I'll have to do it when I land. You'll be, you'll, yeah, do it when you land. You'll be you'll be fine. But but that that's the thing. Like. That's why I bet Jonathan Gannon, the coach of the year as well, because like if, if, and we got the loss that we needed from Washington last week against Pittsburgh, where it, the commanders probably aren't going to win that division. Now uh, the Vikings probably aren't going to win that division now for O'Connell. So like the path is there for, for Gannon and Kyler Murray to win these awards. Absolutely. Yeah. Plus 800 is not a bad place to be. I love how Ham Hamlin's on here. Plus a thousand that yeah, last year would have been nice. Well, that's that, that's, that's, there have been many arguments about that this year about how, yeah, he was active last year, but really didn't play a ton. And they're, they're kind of saying, well, yeah, he's coming back. He's still coming back from uh, the, the tragedy from a couple of years ago. So, you know, it, it, I, I think coach and comeback are the two markets that I think you can certainly make a bet. Jeff actually thinks you can make a bet on Patrick Mahomes. Mm. But by the way, I got a sweet Mahomes Texas Tech jersey last week. They had they, they, oh, the, they, yeah. Yeah, they the Mahomes design jerseys for Texas Tech. Very, 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 very. I should have lied bet Colorado when they were on 13 nothing. I knew better, I and I, sh I just didn't do I it. Did. I should have yeah, done it. it was, yeah, it was, it, that, so, worked out, that worked out well. Yeah. But speaking of, speaking of betting, Plenty of betting talk coming up in the gambling group chat when Jeff and I here are joined momentarily by Will Hill and John Murray from the Superbook. Enjoy. Time again for the gambling group chat. Myself and Jeff joined by Will Hill and John Murray of the Superbook. And, and John, I'm, I'm guessing you're probably feeling a little bit better uh, this week. We got some other dogs to cover. E even a couple won outright for you. Yeah, Sunday was the day where I just felt like we left a lot of money on the table. We would have won. A lot of money in the morning if Jeff's Chiefs had lost, and that I guess that just isn't possible. I, I think it's time to just accept the fact that that's just never going to happen. And then on Sunday Night Football, we we did fine because Houston did cover, but the potential windfall of the Houston outright win it just seemed like it slipped through our fingers, guys. Five interceptions from Jared mm -hmm. Goff, and they come back down sixteen in the second half on the road. That's pretty crazy. It's imp it, it seems impossible. Just like two right. things, two things. I think we, we just have to accept, John. The Cavs in the NBA are going to go eighty-two and zero two weeks in a row with an NBA reference from me. By the way, how about that? And, and the Chiefs are just going to repeat as world champions uh, with, with seventeen and zero, and then for twenty and zero. I think it's pretty much where we're headed. Oh yeah, there's no doubt that Cle Cleveland should easily be able to go eighty-two and zero. I don't see why that would be much of a hurdle for them. That that shouldn't be a problem. But we should ask John what he would make eighty two and zero because we were talking yesterday that that that, that Sammy said there someone was offering it at like what a hundred to one, a thousand to one, a thousand to one, thousand to one. What would you? So a uh, sportsman was offering a thousand to one. The Cavs go eighty two and zero. I mean, you you would. I mean, honestly, you'd need to add several zeros. To Correct. Number, Jeff. Like I'm not even kidding. Like you, just for them to go thirty, I think thirty five and zero would break the Lakers record or thirty four and zero. That would be way over a thousand. I mean, way, way over. Come, come for you're, good. You're doing a parlay where they've got to win in every mm -hmm. game. What's their What's their record now? Thir Thirteen and 0, 13 and 0. 13. And you just need so you'd have, more. You'd have to do a sixty nine game parlay, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's how you figure out the math. I have not actually looked at their schedule, but a sixty nine game money line parlay, which I assume would include back to backs. And, all, and and what have you? It, it would pay, I mean add three or four zeros to that number. You might be in the ballpark. And of course, we know that it, uh, all their players are going to play every single game as well. Because I mean, well, of course. Night, night of course, night in and night out, they're, they're the most reliable athletes in in in, in the world are the NBA athletes who are who are out there playing eighty two games a year. All right, we I I, well I, I, I think we're I, th I think we've exhausted our NBA content uh, for the week, and we're going to give the people what they want. Commanders Eagles Thursday night is a, a really good game. Uh, I'll have some thoughts on it uh, in, in in the best bet segment at the end. But it looks like the Eagles are finally getting a uh, get getting their legs under them. They played much better in recent weeks. Three and a half point favorite. Uh, Forty eight and a half is the total. Uh, Will and, and, and I guess we'll start with you, being that we uh, we kick something. John first. We'll get we'll go equal time here. Uh, Will, you got any thoughts on the uh, Thursday game? 
Yeah, I mean, we we do always start with John and his emotional well-being, his emotional state. John doesn't have to pay for a therapist. We're his therapy. We start every show. It's never, hey, Will, how are you doing? How's your week? It's always John's emotional well-being is how we start the show. But uh, I, I actually like Philly here. I think this is going to be a tough environment for for Washington and the, and the young quarterback to go into. Like you said, they've been dominant, quietly dominant the past five or six weeks, buried the Bengals. Uh, I mean, they, they dominated Jacksonville on the stat sheet, even though that was a 28-23 final. They more than doubled them in yardage. Uh, last week was just, you know, the, the varsity versus the JV. And Jeff, I'm sure you could speak to this too. I, I always hear the film guys say Fangio's scheme takes some time to catch up to. It takes some time to learn. They've got two rookie corners. It, it seems like they're learning it because they're going on defense. And I know people are down on the coach and they had some strange things early in the season. And it's funny to look back always at week one, week two, and week three early in the season back in September, they were a two and a half point underdog to the saints to show you just how much people soured on this Eagle team, the way last season ended, the way this season started. But when you can line up AJ Brown and Devonte Smith and Goddard and Barkley and, and hurts his uh, borderline top 10 ish quarterback, that's a hell of an offensive football team, a defense that's playing better. I don't love laying the three and a half, but I think Philly wins this game by a touchdown 10 or so points. I like Philly here tonight, Jeff. Well, unless you can name the whole roster of the Eagles, you're not allowed to talk about them. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I think that it's, look, the, the the thing you mentioned about Fangio is, I know it's true offensively, right? It, if you talk to coaches about this, they'll, they'll, they'll back me up. They'll, they'll mention this as well. It takes eight to 12 weeks to install a new offense and feel very comfortable in that offense. I'd imagine the same is happening on defense. And we're seeing the in Philly right now where eight to 12 weeks, right? We're kind of in that sweet spot right now. And we're seeing the Eagles get healthier on defense, but also find some playmakers, a linebacker, their young defensive alignment continue to improve each week. And they're starting to get the hang of what Fangio wants. And you mentioned it, Will, this is a, a tough week for a young quarterback, right? You just played Pittsburgh. You had a tough loss. Now you go on the road. Philly's a very hard place to play at night, but those fans get a little, a little sauced up. They're loud. They're into it. Uh, one direction I look, guys, Washington's run defense is really bad. I think it's 28th in the NFL. It's a problem against in, the Eagles. <laughs> in, in yards allowed per game. Uh, Gainwell is the Eagles' backup running back. His number's only 13 and a half tonight. He's been over that number four last five games. The Eagles have started to run the ball better and sort of committed to running the football. Barkley does get some reps off. And Gainwell gets a lot of yards, guys, on sort of third and 12. Like, they just run the ball on third and 12 and just go punt the ball. Like, Eagles do it all the time. Um, two-minute warning, two-minute offense. Gainwell runs the football. So I, I took Gainwell over 13 and a half. Last comment here too, uh, Jordan Mulata, Eagles left tackle, I believe, off the injury report, off IR, will play tonight against Washington, John. Hey, Jeff, when you say the Eagles fans are going to be sauced up, what do you mean by that exactly? <laughs> drunk, drunk. They will be drinking drunk a lot. Tonight. Yeah, yeah, they'll so be drinking. We're, gonna, we're actually taking mostly bets on the on Washington on this game, which That's I, I find a little telling. I like the Eagles too. I agree with what Will said and, I actually I used the Eagles in in the big survivor contest about a month ago against Cleveland Bear. If you remember yep, that, that game. was a fun game. And I remember coming. I can't wait from that game thinking, thank God I can't use the Eagles <laughs> again because they suck. And ever since then, they flipped the switch, and they look like they're one of the best teams in the NFL. And it, you know, Will mentioned the, they've got all the star players on offense. The coaching staff looks like it's gelling. They look really good. I think they should be able to handle Washington pretty easily, really. I, I, don't, I don't think – I think Washington's been exposed a little bit the last few weeks. They should have lost to Chicago. They yeah. did lose on Sunday to Pittsburgh. They're, they're starting to show their true colors a little bit. Yeah, I I, I agree with you all. going to kind of echo some of the similar thoughts uh, later in, in, in the show. But, yeah, a bit, yeah, the winner here, like if the Eagles were to win here, uh, you get to, what, eight and, eight and two, and then you still got games with – Carolina, Dallas, and then the Giants. So, the, so you, you're probably sitting on 11 right there, and then then you got one more meeting between uh, Washington and Philly, December 22nd. So it's a it's a big game for uh, the, the division and a potential playoff home game as well. Are we interested in at all in Eagles NFC futures, or are we not? Are we just think they're so far behind Detroit, right? Or Detroit is so far ahead right now. Well, or is it, I brought it up with the Niners last week too. Like, is it a good time with all the, everyone loving the Lions and the Lions winning again and uh, Dan Campbell and his post-game locker room talks and, and all of the feel-good stories about the Lions? Like, uh, are betters, are we missing out an opportunity maybe to uh, get a good number on some teams that potentially could get to the Super Bowl? What's the number? Because I'd love Philly. Boy, if, if you could ever it's probably get... Right, it's probably around five to one, right? Yeah, it's not terrible. I mean, again, you can... 
just kind of playing game by game. But I, I don't like I don't I, I think Philly, I think directionally you're completely right. Like Philly, maybe it's a good buy low spot. We talked about the 49ers last week. You don't want to end up with tickets on all these teams and just kind of cancel yourself out. <laughs> uh, but I, I agree they're they are a little bit of a sleeping giant here. And um, boy, if you could ever and I don't think it'll happen because I think the, the Detroit's probably gonna get the one seed, probably. But if you could ever get golf outdoors, cold weather in Philly in January, I, I don't know how well as well rounded as Detroit is. I don't know how well that'd go for the Lions, but um, I, I wouldn't be shocked if we're looking at an NFC title game of the Eagles and the Lions here in a, in a few months, and you'd be happy to have five to one. So I, 425, I with your 425. Eagles are 425. Uh, Niners are 475 at DraftKings. So I, I don't know what they are. In John, other- cover your ears, but I will say these books just don't give you enough bang for your buck on some of these, <laughs> you know, these Super Bowl futures sometimes. So, I, I don't know. Yeah, no well, offense we're, to you we're trying to we're trying to look at what the parlay would pay in the playoffs yeah. and, and, and get somewhere in that neighborhood. And then I don't know what other books have in terms of liabilities. Like I know which teams we're liable to in certain future books. And then you'll obviously you'll lower your odds a little bit there because you don't want to build too much liability on anything. But I agree. It's hard. It's hard to get good value at this point in the season betting one of the favorites. Yeah, you're probably going to be better off rolling over the money yep. in January, almost every time. But I am somebody that said that about UConn in the men's basketball tournament <laughs> last March. <laughs> that I can tell you guys did not work out very well for me. Um, to put it put it lightly, that was not a good call. But normally you're better off rolling the money over. I'd say almost every time. Yeah, it, it turned out being the, the the UConn Express in the in March Madness for the second straight year. Uh, uh, yeah, January. You we talk about your January rollovers, biggest game of the week, undefeated Chiefs at the Bills. If not now, then when? Uh, Buffalo, what, two and a half? I think the number is now here uh, over 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 the undefeated Chiefs. Well, two actually. You uh, know, uh, pretty pretty much everywhere we we look now. Uh, Jeff, I'm 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 gonna start with you. I, I know you probably have some thoughts on this as well. If you want to go big picture, like, but but seriously, if if you're the Bills, like, is this another one of those games where I know Josh Allen has kind of said, ah, it's just a just a, a regular season November game, but it's not, right? No, because they they haven't been able to beat the Chiefs. Now they beat them a couple years ago in the regular season when the Chiefs' offense wasn't as good uh, as it is now. Um, but I, I this is not another game for Buffalo. They're gonna say it is, but. They have to beat the Chiefs, especially at home, to feel good about where they are. But also, guys, just from an an AFC perspective, if they lose this game, Buffalo does, there's no more one seed. The one seed is done. The Chiefs have a three-game lead on everyone, plus the tiebreaker on Baltimore and Buffalo. So really, it's a four-game lead with about, what, six weeks left of the season. So this is done very quickly in November. It's a big game for that reason. Uh, I'll get to my my best bet later. You can have a shock where that's going right now. But the the, the Chiefs... (laughs) They want to win these games. We talked about last week, guys, heading into that, in that Denver game. We all picked Denver. Like that was all. We, like that was. And I bet. I bet on Denver, which I rarely bet on wow. the team my favorite team is playing on. Plus the point. I knew it was going to happen. This is a game the Chiefs want to win. And from a matchup perspective, no Keon Coleman for Buffalo. Amari Cooper questionable right now. If both those guys are out, how are you moving the ball in Kansas City? You, you're just not. And we're going to see a great Chiefs game. Like everything the Chiefs do well, we're going to see in Buffalo on on Sunday, guys. So, uh, John, I think Kansas City wins and covers. Um, what eleven and three against the spread as the underdog is Patrick Mahomes. This should be twelve one and one against spread. He's won eleven games outright as the underdog, and the other ones he lost by I think three three and one. Like he doesn't even lose these games by a lot when he loses. Well, stop me if you've heard this before, but the public is on Kansas City, <laughs> and we're going to need Buffalo. I'm, I can say that pretty confidently, although we ended up needing Kansas City when they played at San Francisco about a month ago. And the point spread was about the same here as it is in this game. So maybe I'm wrong about that. But as of now, we definitely are going to need Buffalo Publics on Kansas City. When we first opened the betting on this game Sunday night, we did see some sharp guys on the bills. So there was some sharp money on Buffalo. The public's on the Chiefs, like I said. I just assume the Chiefs are going to win. So I, that's that's usually – I've kind of – I've been Safe assumption now, Jeff. It reminds me of like the, the Brady Patriots years where yes. it's oh. like, well, no, they'll win. They'll, they'll what, win. What's going to happen and, is – Yeah, the, it's just an easier way to go through life is just to yeah. let it go mm-hmm. and just assume that they're going to figure out how to win, even if that means the Denver kicker missing a five-yard field goal or getting it blocked <laughs> or whatever. They're going to win. 
The, so, we'll, but we'll need Buffalo. They're going to win this week and then lose the Panthers next weekend in Carolina. That, that's <laughs> oh, what the Chiefs on. are going to do. <laughs> come on. When you no. talk about this series head to head, and I said one team has a three game winning streak in, in the regular season, you say, well, yeah, well, the Chiefs have it's dominated. Buffalo. The Bills have won three games in a row in the regular season. It yes. just, they never beat them in the playoffs. It's very, uh, well, it, it, it's just kind of ironic. It's, it's really not what you'd expect. I had to, I'm sitting here literally double checking it, even though I already double checked it because it just doesn't sound right. It doesn't, you know, feel right to say. Uh, this is one of these games, and, and there's something, there's plenty of them in the NFL. Whoever you bet, if you lose, you're going to feel like an idiot because mm-hmm. if you bet on the Chiefs and they lose, you can say, man, they were overdue for one of these. They haven't been playing that well. It's a little like Minnesota a couple years ago where they were just outperforming their numbers. Philly last year, eventually that caught up to them. This Kansas City is not as good as their record, th- this Kansas City team. Uh, but if you bet, like, look, if you bet on the Bills and they lose, you're going to say, why the hell did I overthink it? Why did I bet against Mahomes? So, to me, I think the Chiefs are a good teaser leg. Life on the lines. I actually think the Bills win. Like I said, they they played well in the regular season. They yeah. just can't seem to get the wins when it counts in the playoffs. Uh, Allen's playing incredible. I still think the Chiefs have some vulnerability. You know, kind of both sides of the ball. This is not a great team, despite the great record. It's a very good team, and they might win the Super Bowl again. Uh, you just worry. You know, you worry when you're betting the Bills that the Chiefs they just have a different gear that they just kind of do enough to win. They, uh, you know, it's almost. I don't know, Jeff, Jeff, you have kids. Sometimes you race your kids and you just you run fast enough just to beat them. You can kind of just <laughs> see how much you win by. There's a little element of that with the Chiefs. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have any play. I think the Bills win. I, As far as bets, you know, linking the Chiefs to teasers, I think is a good idea because, look, if, if Mahomes loses by double digits, you know what, you live with it. Game should be close, but I don't know, Barrett, if you have any bets on this yeah, game. Yeah, un- under would be the way I would look, just kind of yeah. echoing what Jeff said. Like, I, you would expect the, the Bills, if they were shorthanded at receiver, uh, to, to have trouble moving the ball and and it seems I seems like they get up for each other though. Allen and Mahomes, when, it's almost like the opposite of two pitchers. When you have two great pitchers, they mm-hmm. want to outdo each other, and you get like a two-one game. You can remember now. Look, you, you look regular season. There are some twenty-four twenties. There is a, you know, last year was twenty seventeen. The playoffs have been the higher scoring game. Right. So I don't know if you take anything for that. I just worry. Hey, it's tit for tat. Go for it on fourth Could down. Be. I worry about like a, a shootout breaking out just because the quarterbacks and, are and, 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 and right. an MVP type. Uh, Type performance, kind of like yeah. one up each other, which could easily see. Well, they, they will certainly both teams will go for it a lot in this game. Sean McDermott, when he plays Kansas City, he goes, which he should, he should go for all the time against the Chiefs because you can't leave. You know, threes don't work in this game, right? And Andy reads the same way. Andy reads. The you don't want to take. You don't want to take the points. So you I know, think, you always take the points. Always take the points. Always take the points. Okay, Antonio Pierce. Um, I I think that. Uh, <laughs> That's what Neanderthal football men tell me. I know, right? It's it's wild. Um, so they're going to go for it a lot of fourth down. So that could lead to a lot of points or it could lead to a lot of failed, you know, offensive drives and the under hits easily. Speaking of MVP, uh, the MVP favorite right now, according to those who set the numbers, even though I still think I would vote for Josh Allen, but that's another story. Ravens at the Steelers who continue to just, defy expectation Ugh. and logic and wins and frustrate Jeff. Um, look, they've been making plays. They've been winning games. Give them all the credit in the world. Uh, you, you felt like Tomlin as an underdog was going to be a trendy pick last week. And Tomlin as an underdog was a trendy pick last week. And they walked out of, out of, out of DC with the win. By the way, you see that video. There's a video out there. Like uh, the, the Steelers talking about a, a snake. And a literal snake in the locker room at FedEx Field last week. We were getting ready before the game, and like a snake slithered out from like Russell Wilson's locker, and like they, no one like was able to get this. So somewhere within that beautiful facility in DC, John, there's a snake living in the visiting locker room at FedEx Field. The the, one, the wonderful, the wonderful stadium that it well, is. That, that's not in Washington D.C., Bear. That's in Maryland. Yeah, Ral 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 John yeah. Maryland. I I, I stand yeah, corrected. Yeah. That's a facility that I've been to many, many times. I'm sorry to hear that. Facility. It's not a beautiful facility at all. And I think one thing, one of my takeaways from that game on Sunday, I think it's time to be, to do, to do away with the chain gang, fellas. <laughs> there's gotta be a better, uh, there's gotta you be think? a better way to do this. Right. I mean, I think, I think we're about to see the end of the chain gang in the NFL. Um, as, as far as the game this week, we'll need Pittsburgh. Baltimore's a three point favorite. Told us 48. We'll need, we'll need the Steelers. And the, That'll be one of the, the heaviest bet games of the morning, and, and we'll, we'll definitely we'll definitely rooting for Pittsburgh this week. Yeah, I've, I've been to FedEx Field once for that great Virginia Tech 
Boise State game or whatever. It was 2010, I think it might have been. Labor Day weekend? Yeah, late Labor, Labor Day, Monday night. Kellen Moore let him down the field late. Uh, I, I've only had the, the, the pleasure of, of being there once. So you actually you disagree with that call? John on, on the, the the fourth down play. See, I, I actually thought the referee got. I thought they spotted it correctly. I, I, oh, the I, Commander Steelers one with Ertz. Com- Commander Steelers. Yeah, he was he was yeah. short. Yeah, I thought so too. Well, I I think that we're going to get rid of the chain gang. That's all I have to say. About okay, that. perfect. So remember remember yeah. that I made that prediction. Let's get let's get rid of the chain gang and and let's start yeah. doing uh, robot umps in baseball as well. Ha! Oh, that'd be fine too. Oh, I used no, to. I I think uh, no Washington blew that game. But of course, we needed Washington. In that of game. course, he did. Uh, Washington blew that game. I, I just, I didn't. Well, whatever. I, I think the chain gang <laughs> last season was the chain. That's all I have to say. Sound like the pretend Chrissy Hine and the pretenders here. John, I want you to watch for this when you watch games this weekend. So, the officials to eliminate sort of the need of a chain gang in the last couple of years, they, they've slowly started to mark the football like closer to the yard line. So like, let's say a guy falls down and let's say the ball's not quite at the yard line, but it's a first down. They'll move the ball up to the yard line to not have to use. So now it's like a legit 10 yards. And they don't have to use the chain gang as much. Just pay attention to that. Like they're sort of giving teams and a couple inches here and there to make sure the chains don't get used at all because they're actually not used very much. But when they are, it looks okay. silly. They were still running out the chain gang. Okay. Well, I, from, from my vantage point, it looks like they're basically just kind of guessing as to <laughs> putting the ball down. But yeah, this looks about uh, I, I like the under here. I, I think 48 a lot for a Steeler game, especially a Steeler Raving. It feels like all of these games between these two teams are 20 to 17. It's, yes. just, it's always close. It's always um, kind of a low-scoring game. Uh, the Steelers know how to play Lamar Jackson. They see him all the time. They got a nice little proxy for that facing Daniels last week. So some of that stuff kind of carries over. Uh, maybe, you know, div- big game for the division. Maybe there's a little bit of uh, nerves early, some feeling out process. Tomlin can be a conservative coach. So to me, getting to 48, you know, basically having to get 50 plus to go over this total, I think is asking a lot. I know the Ravens are completely an over team because they score a lot. They give up a lot. But I um, mean, they've also played a lot of good quarterbacks. They've played Burrow a couple of times. They've played Mahomes. They've played, you, know, you, go, you go through the schedule. It, it's good offense after good offense. Allen in the Bills. So to me, we're, we're looking at another, I don't know, 20 to 17, 21, 20 type of game. I, I would lean towards the Ravens laying it, but it's just, boy, it's, it's hard to lay a field goal when all these games are usually a field goal game, but I, I do like the under 48. Yeah, I, I, I'm probably just going to sit and watch this and, and enjoy my wife's angst during the game, watching this, getting getting mad at everything negative that happens to the Steelers and rooting against the Ravens. Uh, John, are, are, are we uh, are we still uh, hanging on here with the uh, the Bengals to make the playoffs? I, I'm sure they're probably a, a public side this week as a dog at, at SoFi, right? Yeah, they will be. I don't know. I bet the Bengals over nine and a half wins. I bet them to make the playoffs. I bet them to win the AFC. I I, I think they really needed to win that Baltimore game on Thursday, Bear. And then, boy, did they have every chance to win that yep, game. Yep, sure did. But I think I think this is a really entertaining Sunday night game. Bengals, Chargers. I mean, the, the one thing that's keeping me going through this NFL season is I just love Jim Harbaugh. Like oh, I can't. The best. I can't even tell you how many times I've watched that video of. Herbert throwing him the ball and he drops it and he gets so pissed <laughs> off. That's just that guy is just endlessly entertaining to me. I, I love Jim Harbaugh. Really good, really good Sunday night football game. Two great quarterbacks. And we saw some real sharp money to be over here, guys. Over 46 and a half. We're up to 48 right now at the Superbook. So some real sharp accounts over in this one. Haven't really seen anything sharp on either side. Yeah, I haven't bet it. It'd be Charger. It'd be Bengals or nothing, just because mm-hmm. this is kind of a last stand game for Cincy. This is, boy, in, in the AFC, I, it, maybe it's not because you could possibly still get in with eight wins with how this is breaking, and they do get Denver later in the season. They get Denver at home, so that could come into play for tie-breaking scenarios. But you're off of a mini buy with extra rest here, uh, playing on the Thursday night. You're you're off an awful loss. Chargers really haven't been tested. They're kind of just grinding out these ugly low scoring wins against lesser teams they are taking care of business. But, um, I, you know, again, teaser leg for, uh, for since he's probably a good idea. Cause you probably expect this game to be close. So you tease that up to seven and a half, probably not a bad idea. If I had to bet it, I would take the Bengals and 
Um, look, I, I don't, I don't know. What's the Bengals' number to make the playoffs? If you think they're going to win this game, maybe you start to sprinkle them, and make the playoffs, or, or make a run here in the in the playoffs. But there's a lot more talent. But they've let a lot of these games get away. They should have won both Ravens games. They're up 14 last week. They're up 10 at home in the fourth quarter. The first Ravens game, uh, the Chiefs game slipped away. I mean, if boy, if they miss the playoffs by a game, and if they miss it, it it'll be a, a narrow margin. They have just a lot to think about this offseason. Yes, plus 130. No, minus 155. So the no is five is uh. Still, it's, it's still just a small favor because I, I think they're probably seeing yeah. the same things that that seven seed is wide open. Those Wong teasers did pretty good last week, didn't they? Will? Oh yeah, just about all of them got home. Now the Chiefs was one. It depends where you got it, and if you threw the Giants in there, you got burned. But other than that, like the Chargers got home, the Eagles got home, uh, San Francisco got home, well, Arizona, which actually closed the two point dog <laughs> against the Jets, got home. The Dolphins was a two point dog that got home. So, John, I don't know how much teaser action you took, but if people are playing, you know, the uh, the traditional ones through the three and the seven, they had a nice little week, especially if they they kind of wheeled them around. Well, I hope that you didn't use the Giants in your teasers. So I, I hope I, I know I'm sure you did, but anybody out there, that was not a good teaser <laughs> spot with the Giants. But yeah, the, the other ones were all were all got home. Yeah. I mean, those those teasers have been great this year. The NFL is, is closer than ever, right? There's more parody yeah. than ever, it seems like. So anytime you can go up to seven and a half, eight on a one and a half, two point dog, it's usually a pretty good bet. Uh I think we're underestimating the Chargers offense a little bit here, guys. They're up to 12th in DVOA. Like, it, it's starting to play a little bit better. As I mentioned earlier, with the 8 to 12 weeks, we see with new coordinators, a new offense. And, yeah, they don't have great wide receivers. I, I get that. But Herbert's playing better every week. They're running the football better Dobbins every week. Dobbins is having a very good year. Well, who is? Not J.K. Dobbins yes. is having a very um, good year. Those tackles are, are back healthy now, right? Both their tackles were out for a little bit of time. Um, the Bengals' defense is, is 27th in efficiency. It's not a good defense. Their offense is fantastic. The number one scoring defense in the NFL, guys. Los Angeles Chargers. I think Chargers are a pretty good football team. I would take Chargers here uh, to, to win this game and cover. I, I don't think the Bengals have, have shown the ability to win these games. I looked at the, look, the Bengals' four wins, guys, top of my head. It's, it's Panthers, Giants, Browns, and some other team with two wins. Uh, sorry, Panthers, Giants, Browns, and Raiders. They've lost to every good team they played. The Chargers are are good. Like they're a good football yeah. team. So it's I, weird. They're impressive yeah. games with their losses, which is yep. weird. Because they because they play no defense. Yeah. Like this is a game where you know Dobbins at the end of the game, you look up and he he rushes for a touchdown. And the Chargers win by ten. Jeff just hates the Bengals. He does. They're the team I'm most worried about in the po- in the, the postseason. I'll tell you that every year. I'm not worried about Josh Allen. I'm worried about the Joe Burrow. I'm going to eat my words if I say that, probably. But <laughs> in the playoffs, I'm worried about Joe Burrow. What's their number? What's Cincy's number to win it all if, you, if we think they're going to win this week? Win the Super Bowl? I mean, just with the idea that, hey, if they get in, like you said, they're they 40, yeah, yeah, 40, more than these 50, other teams. 50 to 1? 50 to 1? Terrible. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, you, you got, they're going to have to win three road games in yeah. the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean going I, on the road I, would be I, impossible. I, I've got all these. I got all these Bengals futures, and I know they're worthless. Even if they make the playoffs, I'd be better off just parlaying three road playoff games and then potentially the Super Bowl against Detroit, San Francisco, or Philadelphia. Vikings. Uh, are we, well, you, and, and Jeff, you guys are talking. Char, char, are we overlooking Harbaugh in coach of the year, in the coach of the year market? Like, I know people are, Kevin O'Connell and people talking Andy Reid now. A lot uh, of good can, candidates. A lot, a lot of can, there, there are a lot of candidates, but it's, it's seems, I mean, Chargers make the playoffs. I mean, this is the, the road that Harbaugh has gone down before, kind of immediate turnaround. So he, he, I would think he'd probably be live too. I think sure part me. of the, I was just saying, I think part of the reason is we all kind of expected a bump from him. They just, you know, everything went wrong last year. People know he's a good coach. Sometimes this award just goes to the unexpected mm-hmm. team, the unexpected coach. I think people assumed a bump from Harbaugh. So maybe that's why okay. he's being overlooked, but I, maybe the voters won't see it that way. Maybe they'll still give him the award. I don't know. Andy Reid's in the mix. I mean, you can't get Campbell wins 14, 15 games. Maybe he still gets it because of just domination. There's a good six, seven, eight guys that are, you know, in, in the mix here, that Gannon number got slashed. So uh, I don't know that there's any value on that around five to one anymore. Hopefully people jumped in in the 20 to one yeah. or whatever, but yeah, a lot of guys in the mix here. Isn't this, isn't this Mike Tomlin's year finally to win the coach of the year award? There's another one. But that feels like he's another finally one. his year for that. Uh, you can get your favorite guy, Antonio Pierce, um, plus 100,000. If, if Perfect. You, yeah. Yeah. Probably, I'm going to parlay par- with the Cavs I to was go undefeated. just going to say I'm going to parlay with the Cavs to go undefeated and, and then <laughs> and get get a few more zeros there and we'll, we'll finance uh, 
a, a bear bets vacation to to the Maldives in a couple of years once once that hits. You know, maybe Robert Sal is in the mix here in, in memoriam because the defense hasn't played as well since he, since he uh, in, in he memoriam. He's not, he's, <laughs> he did not die, I don't think. Oh. <laughs> but, but by the way, will you mention that? How the hell did the Jets close as a favorite last week? A two point favorite? I had Arizona. Like, are you so kidding me? You had Arizona too, right? Yes, Your best bet. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And I added more. Like during, I, I added like alt lines during the like. What was the final score? I saw. I turned thirty-one seven. I think. I think it was six. Six. It was six. Thirty-one six. Thirty-one six. Yeah. Thirty-one six. Yeah. The Jets are a favorite again this weekend, though. Oh, yeah. God. Right back to. I actually think they probably win and cover against the Colts this weekend. So I, I over. I, I can't imagine spending any money or time or effort to go to the Meadowlands and watch that game. It's down the street. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can fly back from Boulder. You'll be here in time on, on to, to go down the street and watch and watch the Jets play. No, nah, I'm. You sit next to Fireman Ed. Well, why I sat next to Fireman Ed forever. We went in 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 what was that section one thirty four? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, we we were we were section one thirty four, row nineteen, seats thirteen and fourteen, and he and his brother we were like section one thirty four, row like five or something. So he was he was a few rows right in front of us, leading the. Uh, the cheers all those years during the during, during, Ray Lucas jersey. No, I had a um, I had a young, 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 young Chris Felica had a uh, had a Wesley Walker jersey eighty five, okay. uh, and then like intermediate Chris Felica had a Freeman McNeil jersey number twenty four. You know, I have a running back body at all, so I, I number twenty four Freeman McNeil, and then I and then I graduated to. Uh, Jonathan Vilma, my Canes alum. Okay. Had He's num- good. Number number 51. So, yeah, those were my uh, three Jets jerseys that I owned. As no John a, Hall jersey in the closet? No, 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 no John Hall, no uh, no Mark Gastineau, uh, no no Richard Todd, no, no John, no, no, uh, I was going to say Ali Haji Sheik, but he actually had a big field goal for the Jets that one year to get him into the playoffs against the Dolphins, right? 23 20 one year. The uh, Meadowlands was an was a interesting place. Had some character. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, it did. The new place is boring. Not as much as Shea Stadium. Shea Stadium was great. I'm not we're, that old. We were in 142J in Shea Stadium. That was awesome. I remember the last the last game they played at Shea Stadium against the Steelers. The Steelers blew them out. People were like ripping out seats and just taking <laughs> mementos of, of the stadium. It was freaking great. <laughs> it was awesome. Anyway, and, and enough down memory lane of uh, Jets fandom. Falcons, Broncos. I made the bet, John, finally on the Broncos to make the playoffs. I got plus 178, I think, this week was what I uh, mm-hmm. had gotten it at. Uh, Broncos of the, the near win in Kansas City last week, hosting the Falcons, Kirk Cousins, uh, and that Falcons offense on the road. And I, and, I, and I did buy in now, just in case, like you said, they do uh, – they do beat the uh, Atlanta Falcons at home. And actually, I actually kind of like them this week. I think that defense is good. And uh, the Falcons got, I think, some injuries still kind of nicked up a little bit. Uh, I actually do like the Broncos this week, John. A lot of teams are off a near win against the Chiefs, Bear. I mean, that, we've, <laughs> we've heard that a few times this season. Yeah, I think I think this will be a very evenly bet game. There's a lot of really good matchups this week in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And I, I think this game's kind of being lost in the shuffle a little bit. We've got Denver minus two, a total of 44. Haven't seen a lot of one-way action either way. Haven't seen a lot of the tickets on either side of this game. And we haven't seen anything really that I would consider to be sharp on this game. So just a very split ticket game. And like I said, I think it's getting lost in the in the deck. There's so many premium matchups this week. Not even just in the primetime games, but all really all day Sunday. And I think this one's being a little forgotten because of that, Will. Uh, I like Denver here. I, I bet them on the money line. It's weird with these Falcons games when a, a lot of their lines are like two, two and a half, and they seem to have this habit going back to last year. If you remember with Ritter, where you know they would win but not cover. A lot of their games land on one or two. So I just took the money line as sort of a, a mental insurance here. I've seen it for years with Cousins as a Vikings fan. You get him uncomfortable. He's not the same player outdoors, out of that one o'clock window against a good pass rush. 
Uh, against a good defense, he's just not the same. He can't extend the play. Uh, Atlanta, look, there's still a, a part of me that thinks they're just kind of a soft dome team. Uh, they probably should have won that game last week against the uh, the Saints. They just missed a bunch of field goals. But I think Denver's good defensively. I think they'll rattle Cousins. I think they'll be able to run the ball. Atlanta can't really get pressure defensively. Uh, they're a little shaky against the run. So I, I think Denver, you know, they're not going to ever blow anybody out. But I, I think Denver winning this game is a good bet here, Jeff. Yeah, yeah they could probably play from play from the play from play from the league as we talked about. Like Denver's yeah. the type of team that you get up and then they can run and, and rely on their defense and and get after the quarterbacks. I, I kind of feel like that game script as well. Sorry, Jeff. Um, I mean, you have, you have a dome team going outside, playing colder weather, playing altitude that does favor the Broncos. Um, You know, the Broncos just offensively sometimes uh, they just, they bogged down a lot guys. They they didn't score in the second half of the Chiefs game, right? They had 14 points, I think um, uh, in that game, the first half, like they just have these periods where they just don't play as well offensively. That does worry me anytime you back them. If this is one of those games when um, you know, Nick's just isn't as good as as he needs to be. But the Falcons' defense is kind of kind of terrible. So uh, I would lean I would lean Broncos. I wouldn't bet the Falcons in this game. I'll put it like that. <clears throat> I'm just I'm just looking looking at the run and seeing what is next here. Uh, Seahawks Niners. Well, the Seahawks have really uh, fallen apart here. It, it seems lately. Uh, lost two in a row could be a lot worse than that. A lot of turnovers. Defense has given up. Uh, a bunch of points now going on the road to San Francisco and Niners already went to Seattle uh, and won in front of the vaunted 12th man, which always seems overrated these days. Probably the Seahawks have been terrible at home, but now uh, Niners did get the win in, in Tampa last week. They did cover your first half number. Cool. They didn't cover the, uh, the, the, the closing number, number uh, with the missed bad. field goals, left a lot of points on the board. Purdy was awesome. Uh, I, I think that's kind of what we've expected from from the Niners, and, and look, they're there now in a in, in a race to to win that division. The, the, the loss, giving away those games to Arizona and the Rams, really could ultimately come back and, and bite them in the you know what because uh, we may be looking at a very difficult spot here for them uh, to get a wild card. Uh, it's funny you could actually. If you if you're as down on Seattle as I am, and if you're as down on the Rams as I am, I think the Rams are overrated. Like I, you could actually get basically a I don't want to call it a, a free free money, but there's no such thing as free money. But uh, the Cardinals at like plus one forty to win the division, the Niners are like plus one thirty five to win the division. You just play them both, and you're and, and you're basically getting one of them. One of them is going to hit. I, I would I'd be I feel pretty good to the either Arizona or San Francisco win the division. Uh, back to this week, I don't know if I want to lay six and a half. Seattle, but I think can still score some points. As much as I do like the Niners, uh, I, I don't know if I want to lay close to a touchdown here, John. I would be careful doing that plan that you just described there. You would. Yeah. I would be careful <laughs> doing that. Just doing stuff like that can sometimes end poorly. I don't. I don't know that I would recommend doing it. I think you should pick the team you think is going to win if that's what you want to do. I will say we have seen sharp money on the 49ers in this game. Okay. Right now we got 49ers minus six and a half total, 48 and a half. Seen respected players laying the number with the Niners. Seattle has kind of fallen apart after a good start to the season. Not a big surprise here. And the Niners do need to win this game because Arizona is quietly playing very well right now, and they're in first place. And They've Arizona's played a brutal schedule and they're still in first place. They've got the win in San Francisco. Like you mentioned, the Niners can't afford to give away any more of these games if they want to make it to the postseason. Well, yeah, not a bad spot for Seattle here off a bad loss. This is kind of a desperation spot. I, I don't think we know with and the injury reports have been pretty tricky this year of trying to get clarity with these. Uh, if Metcalf is going to play and Metcalf obviously matters a lot. I can't quite get there with uh, with Seattle. I'm not looking to lay it with San Francisco. You just go back and look head to head. There's one playoff game in there. They, the 49ers have dominated this. They've won six in a row. They've covered a lot of these games. Um, and I would, if anything, just play a team total over 27 and a half. Because if you look back these past, you know, six, seven, eight games, it's a lot of games in the 30s for the 49ers. Seattle just doesn't have, you know, the, the defense of personnel to to really slow San Francisco down. I know they're down. Ayuk and they've, you know, they've missed kicks. There've been a lot of weird games with them this year, Bear, because I know we had them yep. a team total over against Arizona mm-hmm. in that Arizona yep. game where the kicker got Went hurt dead and in the second that half. game off the tracks. Last week they missed kicks. So it's just been a weird year for San Francisco. And I thought, boy, 
what, when the Bucks had the lead last week, I was texting you guys in one of the chats. I was like, maybe it's just not the year for the 49ers because everything seems to go wrong. Injuries, you know, blown leads, all this stuff. But they did win the game. I, I would expect them to win here. They're, they are in that teaser range. I'm sure people throw them in their money line parlays. But over 27 and a half team total is the way I'd play this, Jeff. Well, every time I bet the team total, they do something dumb like miss yep. a bunch of field goals. So um, I, I'm i kind of scarred by it, especially last weekend when, you know, they, they missed three field goals and muffed a punt. Remember, it was 13-3, Bear, mm -hmm. and they muffed that punt after a three and out that the Bucks had. I mean, if they go down and score, that game is done, and we, we probably cover the number, and, and we're happy. Um, but there's a little bit of the Niners, just, just some inconsistency this season, right, especially in offense where they just don't put the ball in the end zone. They're missing kicks. Defensively, we, we know they're really good. Uh, I'm not surprised by the Seattle backslide. I was surprised when we entered the season that they were like a favorite of everyone to over their win total and, and compete in the NFC. I didn't, uh, Wes, I didn't really see that. So I'm not surprised. Uh, I have nothing much more for this game. Yeah. Yeah, I, I might go back to the well with the Niners team total again. Just the, all, all, all reliable. Maybe it'll maybe it'll it's hit. It's been fun. Yeah, it's yeah, been a lot of fun. It, it, it's, it, it's always good. Maybe now with, with McCaffrey back to you, that might help help their offense. But we'll see. Uh, we're going to move on to the Super Six game of the week, presented by DraftKings. The, the column will be out later in the week. Uh, it involves the the Bears' first divisional game of the year. One of the questions, of course, will be what will the outcome of the game be? Green Bay by seven or a, a bear win, loss, or cover? Uh, Green Bay, what we're we looking at, I think five and a half now, maybe. Yeah, five down, and a half. Yeah, you know, five and a half with, uh, well, well not, not, not down to. I think the look ahead, I think, was two, two and a half going the last week. And now we're uh, five and a half. The, the Bears with uh, new offensive coordinator Shane Waldron fired, potentially team turmoil with reports about. Maybe some of the veterans wanting Caleb Williams benched does not seem like a time where I would be interested in betting on the Chicago Bears, John. That's exactly why the money did show up last week on the Bears, guys. You know how these like so-called sharp syndicates bet these games. They they look for these buy low spots like Chicago. Yesterday the Bears were plus six, and that number got bet up all over town. We're at five right now. I think it's ridiculous for the Bears to even think about benching Caleb Williams. What, what would that possibly that does do nothing. for the future of that team? I mean, look, at we saw what Indianapolis did benching Richardson, and they yeah. admitted their mistake after two games. They're not going to do that. They are going to play Caleb, as they should. Wise guys are on the Bears. We'll need the Bears. Green Bay is going to be a popular money line parlay play for sure in this game. Yeah, I, I haven't quite gotten there. I haven't quite got there, but if you're going to bet it, it's just in terms of the value, it's probably the Bears. Uh, now, this is interesting, too. I, I couldn't believe this. Speaking of head-to-head -head records, the Bears have lost to the Packers 10 straight games, and the Packers have covered all 10. I mean, that's just unheard wow. of in the NFL. Um, but like like you guys mentioned, look ahead was two and a half. You could probably – you do pretty well in the NFL if you have the stomach – to bet on these bear type of buy low, you know, <laughs> everyone that's getting beat up um, the, the week before the, 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 like the, it's the opposite of the flavor of the week. If you can bet against the lions, you know, when they're hot, if you can bet on the bears, when everyone's kicking them, that's kind of the way to play it. Cause that's where you get the value. And that's where you get that extra point, half point in these games where they're all close. And it is a good spot for green Bay. Cause they're off of a buy. They're off of a bad loss. I do think green Bay might be a little overrated. I mean, they, they got, Buried twice at home in Lambeau to the Vikings, to the Lions. They lost on a neutral to the Eagles. I don't buy this idea that Green Bay is, you know, this upper echelon team. Indy Bears are nothing for me, Jeff. Yeah, the thing, the, the question I have is, you know, do we see a better Bears offense without Waldron? The, there's many issues in this offense. It's not just the offensive line. I mean, uh, the nine sacks we saw last weekend, I attributed five to quarterback and scheme. The, the, the scheme is a huge problem. Guys aren't getting open either. DJ Moore's not getting open. Keenan Allen's not getting like no one's open. So like there's a whole slew of How's problems. Keenan Allen deal line. working out. <laughs> um, and DJ Moore is is I think that maybe he's excited for a, a OC change, a quarterback change at some point. So it's difficult because we could see a better version of this offense, right? It can't be any worse. And that does make him more competitive. That does kind of put him in the category of covering this game. But the only caveat is the Packers defense does some complex things, and I think they're going to really fool Caleb Williams, essentially, right? They'll find ways to get him into bad situations, and then the Bears aren't going to score again. Uh, how many drives in a row now has it been, Bears, since the touchdown? I mean, it's been a, a, a crazy amount of drives. They just, they're not, no. they're not a good offense right now, so uh, I know that the Bears is the, the quote-unquote right side, right? Everyone's going to be in the package this weekend, but 
betting on them without knowing what they can do offensively is going to be really tough for me. Yeah, this will be a sit and watch the score across the, the bottom of the screen and, yeah. and, and, and just see what happens. Green Bay might be a Sammy bartender play. I know we don't get the bartender plays right now. Oh, it like a little bartender it play. It does, yeah. But against his Bears, though, because the bartender is a Chicago uh, guy, that's a problem. Bartender, what, 70% this year? Our bartender is, we should have the bartender on the show replacing us. The bartender is like Steph Curry shooting free throws, man. He's like 90, 91% or something. It's incredible. By the, the way, is doing pretty well this year in the NFL, guys. They are. You know, I just, it's reached a point where I just laugh when I hear people say, oh, the, Everybody's going to be on so and so. You should bet on the other teams. Like, well, everybody's winning a lot this year in the NFL. <laughs> Eighteen and so twelve. For I, the I'd be careful with that. I'd be careful with that. Eighteen and twelve for the bartender this year. Career. Pretty good, man. Yeah. That's a lot better than me, Jeff. That's a lot better than me. And I was going to say, it make, makes uh, makes three of us. Uh, Monday night, Houston somehow blew that game. Uh, on, on Sunday night against the Lions. I mean, you you can't you can't beat a team on your home field with with, with the lead that you had and five interceptions, like where, where do you go to uh, from here? If you're the, the Texans now, where do you go? You go up the state to Dallas Cowboys. You're a seven point road favorite against whatever is left of the, uh, the Cowboys roster. Again, we, we talked about the, the, the ugly side, like everyone's going to be on the, the Texans here. Right? Who, who is Who could possibly want to play the, the, the Dallas Cowboys here with the, with, with the team that they're out there and the in the and the lack of talent that currently is being assembled there, uh, the, the Texans have to win this game after blowing that game on Sunday night. And all the old, all the old adages, I'm sure, right, John? Well, that's exactly how it's going to be. And we we did see some sharp groups come in around town yesterday. They took seven and a half with Dallas. We're at Houston minus seven. I don't know if Houston does need to win this game. I mean, is there anybody even nipping at their heels in the division no. right now? I don't. I don't know that they do. And I, I look, we're going to need Dallas, obviously, right? I mean, we're going to need Dallas. Terrible Monday night game. I, I got done praising the Sunday <laughs> car, which is very nice. But the Monday night game, awful game. Uh, we'll, we'll need the Cowboys for sure. It's so funny, back-to-back weeks to be rooting for Dallas as a <laughs> touchdown underdog. It's crazy. That's uh, not exactly what I'm used they, to doing this time of year. Uh, well, they, they didn't help we'll you. They, the Cowboys. they didn't help you last week. That, that, I liked that. Dallas last week. To be honest with you guys, I, I thought I thought I thought Cooper Rush could go in there and play well for a game or two, and I thought they were going to get up for that game against the Eagles, and um, I was wrong. So I, I got to wait for Sam to tweet the bartender plays, and then, then I'll submit my picks for the week. <laughs> <laughs> but but by the way, like you talk about the Cowboys on Monday night, I, I still think we have a couple of potential. Cowboys Sunday games that we need to potentially flex out of. We got the Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving game. Really? We got the Thanksgiving yeah. game against the Giants, right? That'll be a that'll be a good one. And I and I think we That's have a like burner there. And and, 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 and I think we have I think we have a Browns Thursday night game or two. And then <laughs> and then like a Browns Monday and a Browns Sunday. Like like we we got a lot of good football potentially on the on the horizon here in primetime over the over the final couple weeks of the season. The problem is there's not a lot of good teams to flex into. I Correct. mean, just go through like yep. half the league. It's a lot of Titans and Jags and Cowboys and Browns. Your Jets have spent a lot of time on prime time. And it's just <laughs> it's about a third of the league where it's just like, eh, I don't, I don't know how much I want to watch this team. I don't, I don't know how much I want to bet this game. Uh, I'm sure John will tell you that a lot of money line parlays will be tied to the Texans. A lot of teasers on the Texans. I mean, I don't know if there's any value laying seven with this team on the road. A lot of people thought they maybe this is a Super Bowl contender coming into the year. I think that was a that was a step too far. They're probably what they were last year. They make the playoffs. Maybe they win a game. Maybe they don't. But I don't know how much farther they're going than that. Uh, but this game is a pass for me, guys. Negative point differential. I just saw that with the Texans too. Yeah, it's giving up a lot of for for a defense that looks so good. And I love D'Amico Ryan's like giving up 226 points. Wow. Yeah. I mean, if you look back at last year, they played a lot of bad quarterbacks. It was a really soft schedule last year, so it, it does make sense that uh, that you know that there's some regression there. And if you look, uh, like like John said, I mean, what is it going to take to win this division? They could go eight and nine and probably still win the division. And, and less, unless Anthony, Anthony Richardson has a resurgence there with the uh, the Colts beginning this week into Jets. That's, an, that's number a four no. overall pick, Anthony Richardson. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah num- number four, not number five, number four. What a, what a this what, a big what difference. A, what a, like a a bad organizational move that whole fiasco with the Colts has been. You didn't like that? When when it happened, I told I just what I said I I was against benching Anthony Richardson 
And two weeks later, he's back after they said he wasn't going to play anymore. Just completely uh, botched his whole thing. The thing about the, the Cowboys quickly, guys, is, you know, when Cooper Rush was announced starting quarterback when Dak got hurt, right, everyone reverted back to, well, he was 6-1 and one last time he filled in. But that team was much better. <laughs> the best yeah, offensive line yeah. in football, the best run game in football. You know, a, a lot of turnovers. A, a, a lot of turnovers, a better defense. The Cowboys stunk mm -hmm. with Dak Prescott. They're going to stink more with Cooper Rush. Like, I, I don't think, look, I, I'm not saying back to Houston lane seven on the road, but – Dallas is not going to be competitive in this game. They're, they weren't competitive with their best players. And now you have Micah Parsons, who, look, I'm not sure he actually not met what he said, but the whole context of it was a little construed. But you've you know, got guys that, like, I can comment. You got Jerry Jones talking about the sun in the stadium. Like, it's just <laughs> it's just a wreck right now in Dallas. And so um, I'm not sure that, that they're going to be competitive in this game. But laying seven with a Texans team as a negative point differential feels like a bad decision and as well. And a bad offensive line. Maybe Parsons goes out and has has a bunch of sacks in the game with a, who the hell knows. But we'll be watching because it's Monday night and it, it'll, it'll be the only... Uh, uh, I'm going to go to bed. You'll go to bed at halftime. Yeah. Watch a little bit of it. Okay. Fall asleep. Sit on the couch and it's, it's, my, it's my Monday routine. Sit on the couch, start my work for the following week, college football and... You'll be back in Boulder most the, likely or Kansas, Arrowhead Stadium. Uh, no, be no, 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 oh, no, we'll Ohio be State. Ohio State, Indiana, yeah. Columbus, Columbus, <laughs> the final two weeks of the regular season before whatever we do in the postseason. All right. All for now, guys. Appreciate you. Have a good week. All right, Bear, in the gambling group chat, you mentioned very quickly robot umpires. I gave you my strike call. <laughs> you seem a little bit, you seem a little face. I, I umpired high school baseball when I was in really? college. Okay. In the summers. I would absolutely do it again. I've told my wife when my kids go to college, I'm going to start umpiring again. I don't know if I, I, I would, I think I would do it again. Why not? Why not? I used to, I used to do it during college. I would be one of the like intramural yeah. umps and, and do that. <sighs> see, I, what I would see, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't ump like one of my, like my main like summer job yeah. uh, during like high school and college was I used to like run like the softball rec, rec yeah, facility, yeah. I, I'd be keeping score. You put out the bases. And I mean, I got, I had to be a lot of friends with a lot of the softball umpires. So okay. it's fine. It's good. Yeah. It's a good summer job. I always debate if I should go out to the side or out in front. I go in front. In front, you go, ha! You just say give strike, you just little, yell out. Give him a little fist. Give him a little fist. Okay. Well, here we go, Bear. Give me a fade. I, I just, I just scared, give me a fade, I just scared Jeff. you. We're going to fade the Saints this week, Bear. I'm going to call you the purple people eater over there. It's, it's a good shirt, right? It is yeah, a good shirt. Yeah. If, if Peter Marlar wants to sponsor me, just let me know. Uh, <laughs> make some good, some, some good big and tall stuff. Uh, thank you. Okay. Nonetheless, my fade, Bear. I'm fading the Saints this week. All right. I'm taking the Browns for the full game. I think I said first half. I'm doing the full game instead. Jameis homecoming? Uh, Jameis homecoming as well. But also, the more important thing, guys, is the Saints are still not good at football. They won last week because MVS had... I saw that in what three yards bear and two touchdowns. I saw that when when that, when, when I, he was when he was running into the end zone, like literally the first thing in, that popped into my yeah. mind was, boy, the Chiefs could really use him. <laughs> <laughs> For the one the one game, the one playoff game a year, he catches the ball. Um, they're still not a good football team. Uh, they had that that that, that sort I'm still of pissed that, at them for losing to the that, freaking Panthers. That dead that that dead uh, that, that 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 dead cat bounce with the coach. Yep, who clogged the toilet. In, in week one. Got to do it um, every week now. I, I don't see that happening uh, again this weekend. But more than anything. Well, you don't, you don't, you don't see the, the bounce. You don't see him clogging the toilet. Both. If he clogs the toilet. He better the clog game, the toilet. Yeah. He needs it's, to it's load up on coffee, donuts, it's, bagels, lo load up. It's not, it's not high, superstition. High, high protein diet and a lot of, a lot a lot of, of black coffee. Exactly. A lot of fiber and coffee. Um, El Duque. The, the Browns are off a bye. So they're going to feel refreshed. They're going to have a good game plan, especially early in the game. And they're going to be healthy and ready to go on defense. The Saints offensive line is still a concern. They don't have a lot of offensive weapons. So I like the Browns here to cover the game on the road. Uh, give me the Browns here fading the Saints. I, I, I can buy that. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I was going to do first half originally, but I went full game. Just, just, just give me a little bit of, of, of breathing room if, if they do, if there's some weirdness happening early in the game. Jameis traumatics. Just something. Exactly. It's a full you, game. You, you, know, you know what? Something. What? Our best bets presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. I like yours. You like mine? Yeah. I know mine last week got there. I like mine a lot. I alluded to it earlier in the gambling group chat. I am also on the Eagles. Uh, minus the three and a half Thursday night against the 
the commodes, the commodores, uh, the commanders, whatever, whatever play on Washington you want to give. I, we, we talked about it. Uh, they're, they're getting healthier now on the offensive side of the ball. The offensive line news that you, you were talking about, is, I think, is really, of, yeah. really big as well. Uh, Washington, I think, coming back down a little bit to – to earth, uh, John alluded to it, how they should have lost to the Bears, and y- you lose last week as well. But, I mean, Jaden Daniels is still fantastic. He's going to be the offensive rookie of the year running away. But but I think the Eagles, after being a little bit overvalued early in mid part of the season, I think they're becoming the team that a lot of us thought they could be and potentially getting to the, uh, the Super Bowl this year. I laid the three and a half uh, with the Eagles, and I might even look at a uh, an alt line of like six and a half or nine and a half or so in case the thing gets out of hand. Ooh, yeah. I, 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 I think this is going to be a fairly convincing win tonight for kind of like I, I, Philadelphia. I, I like a look, I like some alt some alt numbers. What do you think six and a half was going to be? Plus, I was going to say plus one fifty five. Yeah, I, I might I might Eagles, with you on that. Eagles minus six and a half because I mean, because the number is sort of moving in that direction. Uh, I might I might be I the number be, is moving yeah. in in what direction? Toward, well, I Toward, see I see four I now see four actually. Now, yeah. He goes six and a half. Is only, There's is, still from three and a half. It's plus one thirty, plus one thirty one. It doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like a, no high enough, right? A, a lot of bang for your no, buck. No, well, bang for my buck bears my best bet. Presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. We're going back to the the, the old staple. Chiefs is underdog. <laughs> Give it to me every time. I thought you were going to say Niners team total. Twelve one and one against the spread is Mahomes' underdog. And look, I, I'm not someone who is going to wager very often on on trends alone, but it's worth pointing out that. The reason they cover these games is they're typically against the better teams and they are the games that Chiefs care to win. They do not care about being the Broncos. They do not care about, we joked about the Panthers in two weeks. They do not care about that game. They don't care about the Raiders. Which is why they're they going to lose. About, they are. They care about being the Buffalo Bills. Now, as Will has mentioned, it has not worked as well in the regular season. Fairly true. It's worked better than in, in the postseason. But I think the Bills' injuries on, on a, a wide receiver are going to hurt them. And the Chiefs and DeAndre Hopkins are sort of gelling right now, which is good for the offense. The offensive line had some issues, but I don't know if the Bills can exploit that. So I think the Chiefs uh, just win the game outright, but I'll take the uh, the two points. Looking forward to watching this one on Sunday. It's, it's always a Who's good, not looking forward to watching it's, this it's, game? It's going to be good, good games. Are we going to have to get the tweets from everyone about how the NFL stinks. That was a bad week early Monday and Tuesday. Well, uh, the NFL is oh, no yeah. longer fun to watch. And, and, and somebody, I, I forget who it was, but that tweet, tweeted out like when uh, – during the the, the uh, Panthers Giants game, just just remember when we're sitting here in uh, in April in the, in the middle of doing nothing that we're going to be dying for uh, to be able to watch the Giants and the, and the Panthers. I don't know if I'd go that far. No, but UFL though. April. Yeah, um, Masters. Masters. Baseball. Baseball. Oh, baseball starting. Maybe, maybe maybe we'll know the uh, awards winners by uh, by the time it rolls around. <laughs> be, 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 base, baseball is going to get to it any day now. Yeah, wh- wh- why do they take so long to announce these because awards? Because they're stupid. I have a Skeens Rookie of the Year, but so I, do I. I have a Skeens and Merrill. Yeah, I have I have them both as well. And I actually, well, I would have I would have done better with Merrill based on my Same. initial wagers. And then when the Skeens numbers got ridiculous, yeah, I'm like, I got to bet. More on this. I actually have a have a Skeens Jaden Daniels. It can't comes out to like close to five to one. If Skeens wins, I basically break even. If Merrill wins, I get I'm up like half a unit. So that's basically where yeah, I'm at right now. Look, looking forward. Yeah. That, 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 that's coming up at some point, maybe before Christmas and New Year. Now it's the finalist at least. Yeah, no. We, I mean, it's not like we've but for kno- Cy Young, Cy Young finalist. It's not like we've known the, you know, all the finalists or nothing. It's not like we've known the voting since the day after the regular season. Not like we could have done it then. Well, it's been like a month now since the Dodgers won. <laughs> or the did, did the Dodgers win or did the Yankees lose? The Yankees I'm, lost. I'm, I'm being being stupid. Anyway, enough of being stupid. Appreciate everybody out there for listening to our stupidity. Downloading, rating, reviewing, subscribing, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get uh, your podcasts. You get to see. Jeff's nice Peter Millar purple shirt. Thank you. You get to see me fixing my my earpiece, all that wonderful stuff. You get to see John and his and one of his dogs, a beautiful Will, looking good as always. Appreciate every single one of you out there. Until next time, remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.